So welcome everyone. This is a, our Meet the Mayor candidate session. We've given them very small chairs to sit on so they don't get above their station, I'm afraid. So some housekeeping. Um, toilets. You could either go through this door, but you'll be drawing attention to yourself, or you go out the back door and behind yourself, um, near the reception desk and on the left-hand side, there are some toilets there. We're not expecting a fire alarm, so if it goes off, it means there's a problem. So there are, there's a fire exit here and there. If you go outside, you amass in a playground. Where's Becky? The back playground, and then we'll count to you, but since we don't know how many people there are anyway, but, um, hopefully there won't be a fire. Um, I wanted to thank Hillcrest School because they've let us have this hall for nothing. Um, but also, I want to welcome some young journalists that we have here from the Hillcrest Herald who are sitting there. And I hope that their presence means that everyone behaves themselves and with dignity to, sh to, to show what um, meeting mayoral candidates can be like. So we are going to ask the candidates to speak for three minutes each, that's all. And then we're going to ask the candidates to join a group and just carry on moving around the room. So we're not going to ask you to move more than just to get you into circles and after that it will be the candidates that move around to speak to you. So I think we should get going because we haven't got very much time. So candidates, what we're going to do is we've got a very nice little ping in here. So that, so, um, that will ping very gently when you've got 30 seconds left and then a little bit louder when we want you to sit down and let the next person speak. I don't think it's a very nice microphone, or it's the way I breathe onto it, but um, we're going to give you the microphone. And we're going to do this in alphabetical order. We thought that was the, the safest way. So it's alphabetical order by surname. So that means that we start with K, in case you happen to go, get going. Yeah. You might do better than me with that. Hello. Is that, can you hear me? Is that, is that about right? Okay. Um, I'm Sarah Bowman. I'm Kay Barnard, and I'm the Liberal Democrat candidate for Mayor of Bristol. I'm a Bristolian born and bred, and I don't know how many of you here are. Can I have a show of hands? Who's a Bristolian? Oh, that's good, excellent. Yes, so why am I standing for Mayor? Well, basically because I like to make the city a better place to live in. Um, the City Council does an enormous amount in terms of the functions it performs, so it, it, um, it looks after the care of the elderly and the, and the vulnerable in our society. Uh, it, it manages housing, it, um, it, it looks after how many school places there are, I'm trying to think what else it does. Oh, libraries, and importantly, the waste that we all produce, that's important because that needs to be managed. Okay, so, I would like to, um, dear, oh dear, goodness, solving the problems that Bristol face is not going to be easy. We face a multitude of problems, particularly the traffic congestion and the housing problems in the city. Um, and I've learned one thing in my life is that it only, you can only solve huge problems like this by working with other people. It's important, it's one of my major skills, and that's my background. I've worked with charities, I've worked with the university, I've worked with, the health, with an, a health trust as a member of the board. And so I can bring those skills to the role of mayor, and I think that's really important. Um, in terms of what the future holds, uh, today there was an announcement that there is going to be a transport authority for the, the four councils involving Bristol, Bath and North East Somerset, South Gloucestershire and North Somerset. And that's great, because that will at last give us some control over the buses. And I'm a bus user, and I find it really annoying standing at a bus stop waiting for a bus that doesn't come. Uh, and, um, okay, we need more space for cycling and we need better facilities for pedestrians because when I'm not catching a bus, I walk everywhere. 
And um, that's one of the issues that's going to face us over the arena. There is going to be a large number of people who come into the visit the arena from an area outside Bristol, and the public transport is really not up to it at the moment. I mean, I don't know if you've tried to catch a bus after quarter past eleven at night, uh, quarter past ten at night rather, and they're almost non-existent. So these are the issues that we need to face, and we need to sort them together. You here are the people who are going to be in the front line of all the issues about parking of cars when they come into the city to visit the arena. And together we need to solve that. And you should not be bearing the costs of any of the problems that are facing the arena. So thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name's Tony Darren. I'm the Green Party candidate. Um, I am saw, or I expect that many of you listened to the budget today to find out we now have to face another three and a half billion pounds worth of cuts over the next few years. These are cuts that are going to be on top of damaging cuts that are already affecting many of our public services. For example, a hot spring, a drug and hear, hear. advisory service in Arkham. Whatever we do over the next couple of years, it's going to be in the context of fighting these sort of cuts that are taking demand out of the economy and actually causing problems. These are just not, not just national issues, these are local issues. Looking more locally, I think we all know what the problems are. The problems are not enough housing that people can actually afford either to live in or to keep warm. We have problems with the transport system, um, too many cars on the road, not enough alternatives offered and available for everybody to make use of. We need to make a difference to that. As Kay has mentioned, there is a possibility we may be getting some further transport deals. Um, that may be part of the devolution process, but it's also important that whatever devolution process is followed, it does not throw away and throw out the rights of local people to have a democratic input and to scrutinise those decision making. Energy is another area which we need to look at. Renewable energy, energy efficiency, keeping down costs, and making sure that we can reduce carbon emissions, and also reducing the impact of traffic pollution and air pollution, which kills nearly 200 people every year in this city. And another area is education and skills. Um, there is somebody further down the line who's gonna talk probably a lot more informally than I am about education, but we do need to make sure that our young people and people who are past the first blooms of youth, youth can also relearn new skills so that they can make the most of their potential for the future. I'm standing for mayor because I believe this city does need to change. I believe that change needs to involve everybody. It can't just be decisions made by a small elite of people at the very top. It needs to be down to other people. It needs you to have the opportunity to have your input to those decision making. I look forward to uh, talking to you over the next few minutes and uh, particularly scared with the group of uh, cup journalists. <laughs> Thanks, Teddy. Um, who's here from Tottenham and Null? The vast majority of you, and you're the people I want to address. I've had a brilliant day. Not it's been an amazing day. It started down at the Enterprise Zone with the new Bristol, the new bridge to Arena Island, which, which we've named after a Tottenham individual called William Brock, Brock Bridge. And we did because of the local history society that had done a huge amount of research and submitted that name as one of 200 names uh, to, to the, the post for the competition. That was the local stuff. I've also had a day that's been the result of months of negotiating with the Treasury to get a billion pound deal for Bristol. A billion pound deal that will improve our transport, improve our housing, improve our skills and get us into work. That has been brilliant, and that is going to transform the lives of people in Bristol. It's going to transform our economy. KPMG, who work with us on the, on the bid, reckon that it will bring more than a billion pounds a year.
to the economy, although this is a deal of a billion over 30 years, it will generate over a billion pounds a year. And that will go into housing, transport and jobs and all the rest that makes the economy tick. So this job of mayor is one that ranges from the very local, which is what I've spent my life doing in Bristol, trying to make it a better city, to the, to the national and the international, which I've also been doing. Because if people haven't heard of a city, they don't invest in it. And I'm proud of what's been achieved in three years. But in three years, as an architect, I know you can only build a house from concept to, to completion, yet alone turn a city around. So I need another four years in order to be able to get to 2020, to deliver all that housing, to deliver that transport change that we've started, and to deliver the arena and make quite sure that it doesn't cause the chaos that people predict, because it won't, and because I know it won't. And uh, I think there's been an awful lot of scaremongering about it, as there, has, as there was about the parking schemes, for instance, which have turned that out nobody well. else wanted. Leadership is about taking brave decisions and showing people that the other side can be so much better when you get there. And I'm determined to carry on doing it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I'm going to sort of the trend a bit because I don't like tables. They sort of divide us and I like to be speaking with the people rather than speaking to people. So, um, first of all, I'd like to, you know, to, to thank George. Um, you have taught me a lot, so I have to say, over the last few years, and I'm just really, truly grateful to you, actually, for your experience and your knowledge and your know-how, and for demonstrating how not to run a city. Um, <laughs> slightly <laughs> controversial, I know, but there we go. Um, first thing I want to talk to you about, or speak with you about, is democracy. Because if you actually believe there's democracy in the city, then I'm afraid, with all due respect, you're living in La La Land. Because if there was, you would be able to have your voice in all the major decisions which are made in this city. And that's what democracy is all about. It's not about tick boxing. It's to do with giving you value for the money you pay at City Hall. Not only is it to do with the value that, of the money that you pay at City Hall, it also has to do a great deal with the fact that you live in this city, you work in this city, you have your families in this city, you've got children going to school in this city, therefore you are stakeholders in this city. And there is absolutely no reason why you shouldn't be included in the major decisions which are made in this city, because we together, we can make this city an even greater city than, than what George has done. But we have to be on the same page, we have to work together. We have to have the same interests. And as stakeholders, it is not right that you, that you are ignored, that as soon as somebody's voted in or you pay your council tax, you, you're ignored for the next whatever it is, three to four years. That is completely wrong, and that is not democracy. And I am standing for democracy, and if I get voted in on May the 5th, I promise you and I guarantee you here tonight, you can hold me to this, that there will be democracy in this city. And that's all I have to say. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, like so many of you um, here, I'm uh, from Bristol, uh, born in South Me, grew up moving between St. Paul's, uh, Lawrence Western and Eastern. And um, I describe my own experiences of Bristol as, uh, as being across the best and the worst of what the city has to offer. Um, it is the city that gave me an opportunity to stand here as mayor, coming from what you might call an unlikely background. Um, but it's also the city in which I saw so many of uh, the people I grew up with and communities like mine uh, not make it and miss out on the opportunities. In the face of a city with incredible prosperity, I saw too many people left behind. And that really goes to the heart of uh, my drivers as to why I want to, to run for mayor and what I'd like to do uh, and the kind of Bristol I'd like to achieve. I want the aspiration in Bristol. I want the prosperity. It's, it's something I want for my children and, and my friends' children and people who have grown up like me. But it must be, it must be a source of pain and agonies to us.
that in the middle of all the big numbers and the prosperities and the devolution deals and all that we hear going on, that we know that the inequality gap in the city is increasing and the city is increasingly unaffordable. And my fear is that ordinary people are just being almost swept aside. It's like a cultural and a, and a physical cleansing of Bristol, of people even on good salaries now. That must go to the heart of the question of how we do economic development, which I think is an off-the-peg term that we use. We talk about growth, but we've got to talk about the kind of growth we get and the kind of city we want. And we need to be much more intentional about what that end picture looks like. And I hope today that we get a chance to discuss that in the, in the smaller groups. I mean, in terms of me, what I'm prioritising, clearly it's about homes. My younger brother earns a good salary. I'm trying to help him buy. Gone are the days when you could buy a, buy a home on a decent salary. But we need a mix for balanced communities so we don't end up with concentrations of wealth and concentrations of deprivation. I want to see a health programme. I would like Bristol to be the healthiest city um, in Europe. Now the issue is, we've downgraded our Director of Public Health role in Bristol. Downgraded our capacity to invest in better population in the first instance. That's a result of local central government. It's also a result of bad decisions at local government level. That is a false economy and it will cost us all. I'd like to protect children's centres and also invest in children and young people's mental health across uh, the city. I've been asked to speak to um, RPZs in the arena too. You know, I'd say there are pros and cons to RPZs, but the way you do it matters. Cutting through bureaucracy is one thing. Cutting through community voice is something totally different. And the arena, five months ago we were warned it needed a proper transport plan. I do not know why that didn't happen. Now I would just say lastly as well, political change is going to be the backdrop to this election. And when you're offered political change, when someone tells you what it is, test it. The real political change is that our country's politics is dominated by the 7% of people that go to fee-paying schools. <laughs> that I <will> do. <laughs> it's like a singing mic, isn't it? Okay, so I'm feeling a, bit, a little bit nervous tonight, just to be honest with you. Um, We've had a bit of a mad one at the council meeting last night. Uh, I and my friend, uh, friends, were badly assaulted by Bristol City Council security guards last night for trying to enter a public meeting. Um, physically not so hurt, got my arms twisted a little bit and stuff like that, but emotionally and um, spiritually I'm a little bit broken tonight. Can I answer? Sorry? Can I answer that? No, you can't. This is my moment, George. You assaulted people. And their cars. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. I'm trying to speak. Yeah. I'm just trying to speak my truth. Yeah. I just want free. Why do you want to be mayor? I'm just yeah. telling my. This is this is part of the backdrop to why I want to be mayor. Now I don't believe in violence in any form. Last night was a pretty scary night for me for just trying to enter a public meeting, which I am entitled to enter as a, a member of the public and as a proud Bristolian who loves this city. I'm 30, I've just turned 30, um, I've been homeless twice in my life and um, being homeless is a really lonely place to be. I was 16 when I was first homeless. I've got a lot of people, a lot of friends, a lot of people that I know now who are homeless right in this, right in this city right now um, who have no, no, no real like, hope for the future. They're, un, they're unseen and unheard in Bristol and they're the people that I really want to tell the story of during this mayoral campaign. Um, Concerning RPZs and the arena, personally, um, I, really, I don't really give a monkeys about the arena, if I'm honest. I think it's a big project for some very big people to get very rich off, and it's going to cause us massive transport issues. RPZ, again, I think Marvin, meant, well, everyone's kind of mentioned it, but Marvin just mentioned about democracy. That's something I really hold true to my heart, um, that people should be involved in decision making, not just RPZs, but um, in, every, in every aspect, my kind of idea for being the mayor isn't about dictating, it's about actually empowering and encouraging participation. It's something that Bristolians are very good at, very proud of actually, to be involved in, and they do speak out. Look, I mean, look at the people that have turned out tonight. It's brilliant, it's fantastic that people have actually uh, are interested in what's going on and do care about the city. Um, I'm tired. I'm tired of the lies and I'm tired of having to continuously fight just to have a voice in this city. And whoever's elected mayor, whoever is chosen as the leader, if you like, of this city, I just hope that they allow Bristol Bristolians to be involved in decision-making. Whether I'm here or not, I'm not sure, but I just hope that we can uh, see a real more transparent Bristol that includes everyone.
Thanks very much. Cheers. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Christine Townsend and I'm also standing as an independent and the reason that I'm standing is because um, I've been back home working, teaching, working with young people since 2003 which was the year that Bristol had its first academy um, and during that time what I've noticed is that nothing's changed since I went to school 30 odd years ago. Those of us that put our hands up that said that we're Bristolian, we're gonna recognize our schools are socially selective. There is backdoor social selection going on in our state sector. We've got a two tier sector and the academization program has expanded that. It's always been there. The faith schools have always done this, but it has been expanded by the academization and the current administration has accelerated this. And the thing is, is that we have, an in, we have inequality in this city in a way that only London does. Top 10% wards, top 10% affluence. Their peer group is that national stage that our current mayor was talking about. Their peer group is the international stage that that was being spoken about. But we need a mayor that's gonna actually focus on the people that live in the city. Inequality in this city is not changing, it's growing, as Marvin said. If we do not change the, the, the fundamental structures of our school sector, we are never ever gonna close, close the gap. Because schools know, and so do people that run schools, and hopefully the next mayor will know, that the biggest indicator of achievement um, is actually family background. So if, you can, if, you, if, you, if you've got a school like St Mary Redcliffe, that can make sure that they get 7% of their cohort entitled to free school meals or living in poverty, we call it free school meals in the education sector, compared to the City Academy that has nearly 70%, they know that they come through the door, their achievement is way, way higher. This is reflected across the statistics in this city, it's reflected across this in, in the nation actually, but in Bristol it's particularly like it, because if we, we look at the other faith schools, St Bernadette's is exactly the same, look where it is geographically. If the school, if geographically the schools with tiny numbers of free school meals were, ta were taking their cross section, I believe it would be a massive step towards closing that inequality gap. It would enable our young people to feel that they have that they had a stake in our city, that there was an aspiration for them to, to, to reach. And the other thing about um, mixing our children in that way is that if we don't mix when we're 14, we're not going to mix when we're 40. And we've got huge, huge gaps. In dis we've got people that, that live in one part of the city and they never go to the part of the, another part of the city and they just simply don't understand. We don't understand each other. And we need to start with our schools. Thank you. I'm Paul Turner, I'm the UKIP candidate. I've constantly been told that Bristol is a vibrant city, 